right, welcome to Into the Abyss. I thought maybe I would give everyone a tour of the studio. And obviously, yes, the studio being my horror cave, so I'm just kind of showing that off today just for kicks and giggles. So we'll start over here appropriately under the Halloween picture that I got for like five bucks at a thrift store. My Bradbury shelf. Okay, these feature all my collected works of Bradbury. It's kind of astounding to think that I have these books, right? But these are a fraction of what he actually wrote. You know, we got some old school looking books there. Even got myself a bottle of dandelion wine. Um, so that's the, the Bradbury shelf. I'm fortunate to know a lot of writers, to have, being a writer myself, having them as colleagues and friends. So this is my shelf of books that are written by people I know, especially that shelf being the Ron Malfi shelf. This is the Peter Straub shelf. His work is incomparable. And toward the bottom here we have the Twilight Zone Rod Serling shelf. And I'm always collecting cool little things for the horror cave. Um, I got a really cool thing coming pretty soon. Can't wait for that. Can't have the horror cave with the scary stories treasury and the classic universal picture books and a skull that I found. I'm always on the lookout at thrift stores and book sales. I actually got this one, Georgie and the Noisy Ghost, and there's another title I have called Georgie and the Robbers. These were books that I loved as a kid. So I guess even back then. This is a veritable potpourri of books. These are all my short story collections down here. Classic short story collections. You know, the Whispers anthologies, things like that probably could do with more back there. My wife got me that cool marble thing for Christmas one year. It's my Darth Vader cutout. My eighth grade, a graduating eighth grade class got that me, got that for me one year because they knew I loved Star Wars. When I taught junior high, my students knew I was in the cartoons and they knew I was into comic books. So every year for Christmas, it would give me an, assort, an assortment of, uh, you know, cartoon characters and comic book characters. Now, mixed into this shelf is also some childhood toys. There's a Hess truck, which unfortunately I didn't take as good a care of as I should have. And that is, yes, that is a GoBot next to a Constructicon. I'm always on the lookout for cool posters. You know, that thrift stores, buys, that sort of thing. I have a knick-knack shelf over here. We, of course, have got Choose Your Own Adventure Stories. And again, here's a really good example of what you can find at thrift stores. I'm in the shadow here. Mystery Comics Digest, The Twilight Zone. Basically a kind of comic graphic novel collection of Twilight Zone episodes from the 60s. And we all had these, I hope. The illustrated classics. I've got a shadow here so I can't see. There we go. Time machine. I have a whole bunch of those. And again, just always on the lookout for cool things. This is Annabelle Creation. Never saw it. Got it at a garage sale for free. If you follow me on Facebook, then you see how I can sometimes get into homemade crafts. I saw a haunted house at a thrift store for 15 bucks. And that haunted house was made out of cardboard. For like 15 bucks. I'm pretty sure I can do the same thing um, out of my some stuff out of my recycling bin. So there it is, Eel Marsh House. And there, of course, down here is a classic collection of 
old cartoons. I've always been partial to the old soda bottles. Don't know why. Most of these I found alongside the road. This is my F. Paul Wilson shelf. This is the Charles Grant shelf. There's a story behind all these pulp novels. When I was 14 years old, my great grandmother had these pulp novels. She started giving them to me once a month. And then pretty soon it turned to once a week. And then I could take however many I wanted. And she promised me when she passed that they would be mine. Now that 7-Up bottle, I must confess, I bought it at a thrift store. I just really, really liked it. This is my Stephen King shelf here. One year I decided I was going to build Christine. Didn't come out bad. That, we had a comic book illustrator visit our town, and he was doing free sketches, so I had him do Roland for me, the gunslinger. That actually used to be a foosball table, and I converted it. Probably one of the things I'm proudest of is that was a ugly plate glass window. I have been never been known as a handy guy, but I was able to build an inset book bookshelf in place of it. So I'm pretty happy about that. A little blur here. So I have always been a Star Wars fan, lifelong. This was an X-Wing. Again, I get crafty sometimes. Just felt like building it. Same thing with that First Order TIE fighter there. Just got bored. Felt like building it. But also, my students gave me lots of Star Wars knickknacks over the years. I, these are that one right there. These cool glasses that Burger King was giving out back you know, in the 80s. At one time, I could claim that I owned every Star Wars book. Uh, but then they started pumping them out too fast. They do have some Star Trek novels. I did go into a Star Trek phase. These are my lightsabers. Here, I'll turn one of them on. So that's pretty cool, right? We don't talk about it much. I don't. Basketball was the first love before writing and horror. That was a varsity jersey I bought at the school bookstore in Old Varsity Jersey for a quarter when I was in eighth grade because I was determined to make varsity as a freshman. So I wore it like all the time, which I did make varsity as a freshman. The Moves Make the Man, probably the first most powerful book I ever read about not only basketball, but friendship and racism in the 60s. Of course, I'm again, always on the lookout for cool things over here. This is Through a Mirror Darkly by some guy named Kevin Lucia. He's a hack, so who cares about him? Here's my motto, folks. Eat, drink. And be scary. This is my little honorarium. She's supernatural. Um, that's Baby. I built her uh, a while ago. That box with the Nokia on it is a gift from a student. And that's salt, demon blood, and holy water. Same thing with the Castiel flask. And that picture is a different gift from a student signed by Jensen Eccles, Jared Padalecki, and um, Mika Collins. Skull glasses, Christmas gift, because my wife gets me. And we can't have a horror cave without the work of Dean Koontz. And of course, eat, drink, and be scary. Anyone, anyway, hope everyone enjoyed this quick little tour of the Horror Cave, a.k.a. the studio of Into the Abyss.